However, this approach is associated with a significant increase in treatment time in regards to visits to the dental office for the patient and at the same time certainly increases the cost just through the manufacture of the provisional. A different approach would be to manufacture the definitive abutment immediately after impression taking without contouring the tissues. And the question is of course what can we use when? When we look into the scientific evidence if one approach is superior to the other, we will find that there are basically no clinical trials that support um, or prove basically that if we use a provisional abutment, we will a provisional um, temporary that we will obtain a better aesthetic outcome. Most published data on this are simple case reports or expert opinion, but comparative clinical trials, any data is still today lacking. So from a patient consideration in regards to saving time and saving money, uh, it may be interesting to manufacture the definitive abutment immediately and then allow for tissue maturation around this abutment um, through application of a provisional acrylic crown. Now the advantage of this approach is similar to the one stage approach in immediate loading where we do not disturb the interface anymore. We do not remove and disconnect and reconnect our componentry and therefore um, do not disturb the soft tissue architecture. The final outcome of these approaches now, if we look long term, if we see as in this case, in the same patient uh, at the six year uh, recall visit, we see extremely stable results. The question of course is, is this the case in all patients or are there differences and where is our current knowledge gap when it comes to the abutments and the abutment designs? How and why, um, how does the technician need to design the abutment so that he will accommodate for the definitive um, final outcome? And our knowledge gap today that we have is basically whenever we have an abutment <clears throat> and whenever we modify the abutment <clears throat> in regards to the uh, surrounding tissues, in regards to thickness, height, uh, we have no information and we have no data that will tell us on the correlation between the thickness of the tissue, the amount of pressure we put on here and what the tissues will do in regards to recession or maintaining stable. So this is still a significant knowledge gap and the question is can we solve this or do we need to go through provisionals in all our patients. Now let me please go very quickly into an older case where we did the exact same protocol um, where we manufactured a zirconia abutment and as you can see here um, the situation after insertion of the definitive crown everything looks pretty nice everything um, integration in, of the tissues has been achieved we have adequate papilla interdental papilla fill however at the two-year recall the patient presented with a significant recession um, that can in some cases be or represent a um, problem from a clinical perspective as the crown then would have to be redone. Now what is interesting in this case if we go back into how we solved the case you can see that after uncovering surgery we used um, a screw retain, we used provisionals, acrylic provisionals um, just to contour and shape the tissues accordingly and what you can see here is we have with the blue lines marked we have different heights of the tissue margin. So it was back then our belief that if we apply some force to the buckle, so increase the thickness of the provisional to the buckle uh, by adding simple composite, we can not only move the tissues and reshape the tissues in regards to moving them more buckly, but at the same time they would recede more um, apically. And this is basically what we needed here. So at the time of definitive abutment installation after the tissues had matured on the, on the right uh, um, lateral incisor and we have another implant on the, on the left uh, canine area as you can see here, um, the initial result looked quite good. 
but we had underestimated the biologic uh, reaction, not immediately, but over time as the tissues continue to mature. And this maturation can progress for up to 6 to 12 months after installation of the abutment.